Welcome back to our course on how to use the software tool Climocast to support climate change adaptation planning. In this lesson three, you will learn what the National Adaptation Plan process looks like and how Climocast can help with the NAP process. The impacts of climate change on countries and communities are diverse. Therefore, when adopting climate change adaptation measures, countries need to identify the challenges and objectives of adaptation from a medium to long-term perspective. This includes the need for adaptation, the type of adaptation to be implemented, and the expected benefits and impacts of climate change adaptation. The National Adaptation Plan, or NAP, is the starting point for countries in their preparation to adapt to climate change. National adaptation planning is a strategic process that enables countries to identify and address their medium and long-term priorities for adapting to climate change. Led by national governments, the NAP process involves analyzing current and future predicted climate change and assessing vulnerability to its impacts. This provides a basis for identifying and prioritizing adaptation options, implementing these options, and tracking progress and results. Importantly, the NAP process puts in place the systems and capacities needed to make adaptation an integral part of a country's development planning, decision making, and budgeting. It ensures that climate adaptation is an ongoing practice rather than a separate ad hoc exercise. The NAP provides a roadmap for planners and decision makers to fully consider climate change adaptation across sectors and budgets from local to national. In this lesson, you will first learn about the National Adaptation Planning Process and then how you can use data from Climocast in the NAP. In 2001, the seventh conference of the parties to the United Nations Convention on Climate Change adopted the National Adaptation Programs of Action for Least Developed Countries. These countries are considered to be especially vulnerable to climate change impacts. However, these countries lacked a mechanism to systematically address their long-term adaptation needs. Therefore, at COP16 in Cancun, a process was initiated for LDCs to develop and implement National Adaptation Plans, NAPs. The NAP process was formally established in 2010 under the Cancun Adaptation Framework. This was an outcome of the 16th Conference of the Parties to the UNFCCC. It was established to help countries embed adaptation in core development decision making to ensure that it is not treated as a separate environmental issue. The NAP process was also put in place to make sure countries look at adaptation over the medium and longer terms. It was intended to shift from ad hoc project-based adaptation interventions focused on short-term needs towards more strategic and programmatic approaches to adaptation. Many countries were trying to identify adaptation needs and integrate them into their decision-making processes before 2010. The NAP process builds on this work and seeks to scale up adaptation. At uh, 2011 and COP17, there was an agreement to develop technical guidelines for NAP development. In 2011, at COP17 in Durban, South Africa, the UNFCCC requested a group of experts from the least developed countries to draft comprehensive technical guidelines for NAPs with the help of experts from the Global Environment Facility, a UN agency, as well as academic institutions and non-governmental organizations. Um, the 2012 NAP technical guideline by the UNFCC uh, in 2012, the expert group published its technical guidelines for the NAP process. These guidelines are now widely used as an important resource for countries' medium and long-term adaptation planning. 2015 COP21, NAP as an Adaptation Communication. In 2015 at COP21, the Paris Agreement decided that all parties should communicate their priorities, plans, actions, and requirements for any support through adaptation communications recorded in a public registry. 
The NAP is considered one of the main components of adaptation communications. Now let's look at an overview of the NAP process in detail by referring to the NAP technical guidelines. The NAP technical guidelines identify four elements for the development and implementation of national adaptation plans. A. Laying the groundwork and addressing gaps. B. Preparatory elements. C. Implementation strategies. And D. Reporting, monitoring, and review. Each element has a series of steps, 17 in total, and key guiding questions to facilitate each step. This series of steps is called the NAP process. Climate change impacts and adaptation measures vary widely from region to region. Therefore, the NAP guidelines allow a wide range of flexibility to encourage planners to select only those steps that are relevant to their country and to implement them in the sequence that best suits their national circumstances. Scientific climate projection tools, such as Climocast, are most useful during the initial stages of the NAP process, elements A and B. Now let's look at how Climocast can be used in element A. In the first step, initiating and launching the NAP process, you need to explain to policymakers the significance of starting work on the NAP process itself. The output data from Climocast can pro provide a visual representation of future projected climate change on maps and graphs. For example, a map can visually show the change in temperature and precipitation with and without global GHG emission reduction measures. Climocast can show yearly or 10-year projections to compare the timing of changes in temperature with and without mitigation measures. Let's take Nepal as an example. On the left is the scenario with the highest emissions, SSP 585, and on the right is the scenario with the lowest emissions, SSP 126. The climate model is unified to MIROC 6. On this screen, you can see how much the temperature will increase from the average temperature between 1981 and 2000. Now, let's switch to chart mode. The chart gives you a visual understanding of when, under what different commission scenarios, the amount of temperature increase is likely to change significantly. You can also clearly see a range of uncertainty within the same scenario. Comparing the two scenarios for the lowest temperature increase, we see that the 2040s are the major dividing line. This can be interpreted that in the worst case scenario that the international community fails to reduce emissions, Nepal would need to adapt to rising temperatures by 2040. Otherwise, it will be too late. If you'd like to see where the temperature increase is most pronounced in Nepal, please go back to the map mode. We already know that there will be a big difference after 2040, so let's look at snapshots of four points, for example, in 2020, 2040, 2060, and 2080. From this map, we can see that we need to prioritize adaptation measures, especially for northern Nepal. However, even under the lowest emission scenario, SSP 126, we can see that southern Nepal will also experience temperature increases by 2060, so adaptation measures should be taken in the south anyway. As you can see, the output data from Climocast can be used to help you explain the situation to policymakers at the starting point of the NAP process to help them realize why it is important to engage in it. Please also mention to policymakers that different climate models can produce different future projections and that future projections are subject to uncertainty. As Climocast includes 10 different climate models, it is also possible to explicitly show the differences and results between different climate models. Now let's look at element B. The first step, analyzing current climate and future climate change scenarios, is the process in which Climocast can be used most effectively. Since the examples in element A dealt with future temperature projections, we will try to show the difference in future projections by different climate models, namely the uncertainty in future projections. Using Nepal again as an example, we can see the results of four climate models in a four-screen display to understand their differences. 
Clockwise, from the top left of the screen, four different climate models are displayed. The emission scenarios and time periods are kept the same. It is easy to see that the different climate models give very different results regarding how much precipitation changes in which province. In the chart mode, you can see the specific figures. Set the same conditions as shown on the map and select a specific emission scenario and climate models chosen in the map mode. It is also possible to adjust the values of the X and Y axes to create a more dynamic graph. It can be seen from this graph that different climate models produce very different rainfall projections in different decades across Nepal. Choosing which climate model to use for the NAP can be difficult, as different climate models produce very different future projections. The choice should not be made by policymakers alone, but should be made with the input of climate experts and researchers. It is reassuring to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Still, we also need to consider the cost effectiveness of adaptation measures. So in practice, we may be tempted to choose a model somewhere in the middle. The important thing is that once you decide to use a model for future projections, it is important not to change it too easily. Because if the criteria change, the results of the projections as well as the measures to be taken to deal with them will also change significantly. So it is important to be consistent. To visually understand the importance of this, you can use Climocast to see the differences in the results produced by different climate models before adopting one. The second and subsequent steps in element B build on the climate projections identified in step one to identify the vulnerabilities and risks to climate change in each sector or area. Tools such as the Climate Impact Viewer available on APPLAT can help to conduct this risk assessment. Without going into too much detail, the Climate Impact Viewer allows you to see on a map the impact of climate change on crop yields, sea level rise, heat wave mortality, and more. Element C, implementation, and element D, monitoring and evaluation, are not expected to be directly applicable to Climocast, as these are the processes to be undertaken after adaptation measures have been determined based on climate change impact assessments. Therefore, we will only briefly introduce them at the end of lesson three. Now let's look at the case study of the NAP process of Nepal, one of the LDCs. The Ministry of Population and Environment of the Government of Nepal launched a NAP formulation process in 2015. The objective was to strengthen climate preparedness and to facilitate climate inclusive planning within existing programs and policies across sectors. The process was mindful of the geographic, geopolitical, socioeconomic, and sociocultural realities of the country and its people, and it was inclusive by engaging vulnerable groups and emphasizing gender concerns. The multi-stakeholder consultative deliberations also ensured that the viewpoints of non-governmental and private bodies were incorporated. Nepal's NAP formulation process followed an integrated working group approach with seven thematic groups and two cross-cutting groups. They exemplified the intersectoral nature of the process and aligned with existing policies and programs. The process was transparent and provided a scientific basis for decision making. Nepal's NAP process has been unique in its emphasis on inclusive bottom-up approaches and by producing developmental co-benefits. Finally, in October 2021, Nepal's NAP from 2021 to 2050 was approved by the government. Section 3.2 on projected climate change of the NAP shows the future projections of temperature and precipitation for three periods and two emission scenarios. Of course, there are many other climate projection tools besides Climocast. It is likely that this map was created using one of these tools. While it was sufficient in this case, the output data from Climocast can be used to show more explicitly the differences between climate models and the resulting uncertainty in future climate projections. 
You can also use the chart mode function to insert graphs showing the actual climate and precipitation change figures in an easily understandable way. If you've already created an app for your country, we encourage you to consider how you can augment the future climate projection section with data from Climocast in this way. If you haven't created an app yet, you can use existing apps, such as Nepal's as a reference, set the conditions that you think are most valid using the output data from Climocast, and insert the output maps and graphs. Okay, so now let's briefly look at the remaining elements of the NAP process, C and D. A key component of element C, implementation strategies, is developing a finance strategy. Funding will be required throughout the NAP process, from the launch of the NAP to the implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of priority adaptation measures. The NAP Global Network Guidance Note on financing the National Adaptation Program process identifies three key considerations in accessing funding for the implementation of the NAP process. Number one, identify the funding gap which should take place during the planning and development phase of the NAP process. This will determine the funds required to cover future operating and investment costs. These estimates should cover the full cost of the whole process from the development and implementation stages to the monitoring and evaluation stage. Number two, determine financing options, taking into account your own national circumstances and whether it is possible to combine different sources of funding to meet your needs. The diversity of climate adaptation financing options available will depend on the country's current state of development, existing bilateral and multilateral agreements, and the existence of national and regional adaptation programs. Number three, develop practical operational next steps to move NAP financing strategies from planning to action. These steps should help improve access to finance and could include policy reforms, strengthening institutions and coordination mechanisms, developing proposals, capacity building, and establishing systems to monitor and track adaptation funding. Now let's explore the different types of funding opportunities that exist in the NAP process. Apart from regular government funds, bilateral funds, and some private funds, there are also multilateral funds, which are public funds delivered through coordinating institutions and mechanisms. Detailed information about the general sources of funding that countries can use to support their NAPs, as well as for climate adaptation and mitigation, is available on the webpage of this e-learning course. Let's go back to the case study of Nepal and find out how they used external funding for their NAP process. UNEP supported the government of Nepal with almost three million US dollars from the Green Climate Fund for a three-year project in 2017 entitled Building Capacity to Advance National Adaptation Plan Process in Nepal. This GCF project built on support already provided by another program, the UNDP UNEP NAP Global Support Program, which in turn is financed by the Global Environment Facility, which has supported Nepal since 2013 to identify the country's technical, institutional, and financial needs in order to help it integrate climate change adaptation into its medium and long-term national planning and financing. This project supports the Ministry of Forests and Environment to reduce vulnerability to climate change and increase resilience through the integration of climate change adaptation into development planning processes by the implementation of its program and actions under its four components. First, technical and institutional capacity for the NAP process in Nepal. Second, climate information systems developed and strengthened. Third, funding strategy for NAP process, including for its implementation. Fourth, monitoring, reviewing, and reporting of the NAP process in Nepal. As one of the measurable outcomes of this project, Nepal successfully endorsed its NAP document in October 2021, right before the COP26 conference. Finally, I would also like to briefly touch upon element D, reporting, monitoring, and review. Monitoring and evaluation, M&E, is an important process for ensuring the effectiveness, equity, and efficiency of adaptation projects and measures and for scaling up funding. When properly conducted, M&E benefits stakeholders in three ways. 
accountability, project and program management, and learning. Overall, it improves future adaptation efforts. In line with the principles of adaptive management, the NAP also should be a living document that is regularly revised and updated as circumstances change, more information becomes available, and mainstreaming of adaptation is promoted. It is important to note that, as identified in element A, when the NAP is revised periodically, the same climate models used in the previous NAP process should be used when updating the climate projection information. This is because future climate projections provide the basis for managing the progress of adaptation measures. This brings us to the end of Lesson 3, where you learned about the NAP process and how you can use data from Climocast in some of the elements of the NAP process. This is also the end of our course on how to use the software tool Climocast to support climate change adaptation planning. In Lesson 1, we reviewed important concepts of climate change, impact assessment of climate change, and climate change forecasting and its uncertainty. In Lesson 2, you learned how to use the Climocast Future Climate Projection Viewer. And finally, in Lesson 3, you learned how this tool could be used to support the National Adaptation Planning process. Now, it is your turn to use this newly acquired knowledge in the climate change adaptation process of your own country or district.